Hi, in this video we're going to use the new light groups feature in Blender 3.2 to render out an animation and then relight it in the video editor. In my case, I'm using DaVinci Resolve, but it works in all the other video editors. My name is Chris and I make Blender tutorials here on YouTube. Check out the other videos here on my channel. I have uh, content about geometry nodes and animation nodes, uh, modeling, non-destructive modeling materials, all sorts of things. And if you like my content, please give the videos a thumbs up and consider subscribing. It really helps. Thanks. Now let's jump into the tutorial. Let's start with a practical example of what we're actually trying to achieve here. I rendered out this little animation, created it in Blender, and then I used blue and the red light on the sides for some accent lighting. And it's just this rotating block that says like, comment, subscribe, get notified, so that you guys know that you should like, comment, subscribe, and activate that notification bell. However, I rendered it using a blue and the red accent light on the sides. In my studio here, I have a pink light to my left and I have a blue light to my right. And then I also have this blue or teal light in the back there. Wouldn't it be nice if we could use that same render from Blender without having to re-render it out of Blender and just relight it in our video editor so that if I change my lighting setup in the studio here to red and green, that little lower thirds animation can still be used and matches the studio lights. Now I am in Blender 3.2. As you can see, this is the default startup scene. And the first thing we have to do is we have to switch over to cycles because the new lights group feature is only in cycles at the moment. I'm also going to switch this over to GPU because why not? You can find the light groups in the, what is it called? View layer properties tab. And it's all the way down here. You can see light groups. So we can create light groups. We can assign uh, one light, one light source to one light group. And then we can render those light groups as passes. So let's see how this is done. Our default scene has one light here. Let's duplicate this and put another one on the other side. And uh, I'm going to create two light groups for my two lights. Just going to create one, call it A, then create another one and call it B. And then I take this light and go to the object properties. And in a shading, we find light group. So the left one, I'm just going to put in A. The right one from camera right, I'm going to put in to light group B. Now if I look uh, through the camera and switch this over to rendered view, uh, we should probably give our left light source and this one here maybe a red tint and then this one we can give a green tint. We're basically done with the setup. All we have to do now is render this out and we can find the light groups in the compositor. So let me just hit F12, give this a quick render. Okay, the render is done. So now in the compositor, we can go use nodes. And you can see here, we're not only getting our final image, which is, um, ba -ba 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 -da -ba -da. if I put a viewer node here, you can see this is the final render. It has the red and the green light in it, but we also get these um, A and B outputs here. And those are our light groups. So if I control shift left click on this little output here, I get a preview of just the red light in my scene. And if I do the same thing here, I get the green light in my scene. So if we wouldn't have this output here, how could we get our final image back? Well, we just have to shift a color mix. We just have to add, where's add, the red and the green together. And you can see we have this output, which is almost the same as this one because I think we have some uh, world lights in here. We don't need world lights for our scene. So let me just switch that to gray. Also, I'm gonna change the samples for the render here to something much lower because then it goes quicker. So render this out. Now we have a black background. So this is the preview of um, the, the composite that Blender generates. And 
Now adding the red and the blue, uh, the green <laughs> together gives us the exact same result. So we know that the light passes that we get here from our light groups just need to be added on top of each other. If you have more than just two light groups, if you have three, four, five, you just need more add nodes here uh, and add it all on top of each other and then you get the final result. Cool, now one issue though, I want my lower third animation to be transparent. So we know we have to go to film, we have to enable transparency, and then when we look here, we can see that this is now transparent. If we give this a quick render, F12, yes, we're getting a transparent background. And we can see, okay, our final render uh, is transparent. This is quite hard to see that this is transparent. Let's just switch this over to an image editor and go to the viewer node, because here we get this checkerboard. We can see clearly see that this is transparent now. But if we combine our red and green renders, it is black. That's no good. For that lower third animation, of course, we want everything around that little thing to be transparent. So how do we get our transparency back? Well, we have the alpha output that is a standard thing in Blender, um, sort of an alpha pass for uh, that render layer. So all we have to do is a um, set alpha node we take our generated combined added on top of each other image, use the alpha, and now we have a transparent background. So preview this, preview this, looks exactly the same. Now, we want to render out each of these light passes separately, right? So we don't, we, we actually don't want this combined image because, uh, I mean, we have that here. We, that's not what we want. We want the set alpha, yes, but we don't want it on the combined image. We just want it on the red. And then we also want a set alpha for the green. And we want to render this one out in, uh, own, in its own uh, image sequence. So we want two image sequences. How can we render out two image sequences um, in just one go? One render animation click and we want all of the images on our hard disk. Well, we can use the shift a output file output node. So let's plug that in here and see, it doesn't plug in. Uh, let's see what we can set up here. The node has properties and these are your file output properties that you might be familiar with um, from, where is it here? So down here, you usually have the output, you specify the directory and then what sort of uh, file format you want. You can do the same thing with this file output node um, and you set it in here. So what do we want? We want this red um, image sequence to go into a um, directory and I'm just gonna call it red. Uh, using the double slash at the beginning means uh, relative to wherever that blank file is stored. And we don't want PNG, uh, we actually want OpenEXR. Uh, we can use RGBA because we definitely want the alpha in there. And uh, we can use float, that's fine. Um, we do want to compress this and the best uh, codec to do that is the DWAA lossy. It is lossy but you will never uh, find any artifacts in this. Uh, I've never seen any compression artifacts. It's a really awesome file format, OpenEXR with DWAA. Remember that this is what you want to render. Forget PNG. Okay. And then of course, we also want uh, the green in its own file sequence. So let's just duplicate uh, Shift D, this file node, plug this one in here and render this into the green directory. Now, if I hit render, render animation, um, and let's say this cube rotates or something, you need some sort of animation. Um, for each image, we get those three passes. We get the, the original, let's get rid of the viewer node. We get the composite, so the render result with red and green put together. And then we get the red and we get 
a whole image sequence for just the red uh, channels, these images. And now we get the green ones in the green directory. And yes, of course, uh, OpenEXR has alpha channel, so we will have transparency and we can use EXR files in DaVinci Resolve, no problem. Before we jump into DaVinci Resolve though, let me just jump into my lower thirds animation and show you exactly what I did because it's basically what I just showed you here. So this is that blend file, it is animated. So you can see here, this is what, what's happening. All it is is really a cube, default cube, uh, stretched out and then uh, four different texts with different fonts uh, parented to this cube. So if I move the cube or rotate the cube, all of these just go with it. The animation is pretty simple. I have, um, let's go to the graph editor maybe. So this is that animation, right? So it turns, it, it sort of flicks in like this and then it slowly turns and shows you like, and it goes faster, shows comment, goes faster, shows subscribe, get notified, and then it flicks back out again. So this would be that animation. This is for the X axis. And this is just that start flick in and the end flick out on the Z axis. That's all that there is to this. And you can see here, I have a three lights. I have this key light here, which is just that white light shining directly onto it. So we can read the text. I have the blue light on the left. I have the red light on the right, red, blue. And here you can see I have three light groups. Though this one is called key for the key light. This one is called right. And this one is called left. Those are those three light groups. Where are the light groups in here? key, right, left, okay? And then when you render this out in the compositor, same thing, we get key, right, left, set alpha, and then output this into the key, right, left, file output paths. And those are again, open EXRs with the WAA. So you can see exactly what I just showed you for uh, this animation. Then I rendered this out you end up with actually four directories because you also get the composite, the actual finished render, and then you get the key, the right and the left. And on the hard disk, this actually looks like this. So here would be the composite, all the EXRs. Let's just open one. Um, so here we can see this is the final thing with the blue and the red light. But if I go into the key and open one, this is just the main white light, no red or blue lights from left or right. But of course, if I go to the, let's go to the right, look at this, we can get uh, only the red light in our scene. So now we have four image sequences and we can use those in DaVinci Resolve. So let's do that next. All right, I am in DaVinci Resolve 18, which is currently in beta. This is the studio version, but all we need to do is stack those layers on top of each other and then add them. And that should be possible in the free version. And I know it's possible in the free version. And of course, in older versions as well. So let's get our uh, image sequences in here. We go to the edit page and then from the file explorer in Windows, I'm gonna get the key. Uh, light, the first light group, uh, select all, control A, and then just drag it into the media pool. So we have this image sequence in here now, you can already see when I scrub over it. Uh, that's the preview for the key light. Then we take the left, control A, uh, uh, drag that in here, and then the right, control A, and drag that in here. All right, now we have to stack them on uh, our timeline. So let's get the key light into our timeline. We'll bring this down, then take this one, put it on top, and then take this one and put it on top. So if we look at this now, we can only see the red because we have to switch the red over to add and the blue to add. So we're adding the blue and the red onto the key light, which is the white in the middle. And there you have it. We have our animation in here. Now it doesn't quite look the same. So this is what it should look like. 
And that is because we need to apply a lot. The EXR files are sort of like raw files and we have to, and Blender writes them with a gamma of 2.2 or something. This is all this uh, color science and, and color transforms. It's like mind blowing, but I know that I have to apply a lot and it's very easy to do in DaVinci. You just select all three, right click, LUT, VFX IO, and we go linear to gamma 2.2. Now let's check if we have transparency. So let's move this up one layer and put something in the background. Yes, it's transparent, very nice. This one is a cool uh, background generator. Cool, so we have motion blur from Blender, very nicely rendered. And now we can uh, change the colors. So how do we do that? Well, we just go to the color page this would be the uh, the main light, the key light, the white one. It's a bit hard to know because in this case, the first frame of uh, our image sequence is very dark or basically empty. Um, but this would be um, the left one, I guess. So let's go to a frame where we can really see the blue and the red. And then on this clip, I'm just gonna change the hue. So I can make it pink, for example. And on this one, we can switch this over to green or whatever, green, like that. So now we are relighting, or we can change the color, we can change the saturation, so I can go desaturate that light or make it really green. And of course we can also change the, the overall brightness of that light. Uh, and it's all done in the video editor. So if I record a different background video with different lighting, I just go in here and change uh, the color, great color correction uh, of um, these different layers. And over here in the edit page, you can see it now is pink and green. Now you might be thinking, hold on a second. What if we get the composition EXR image sequence in here as well. Put that on the timeline here. Maybe also on a background. With the blue and the red, can't we just go to the color page and play with the blue and the red to change the colors? Um, yes, hold on a second. Let's just try this real quick. First of all, let's go to a frame where we have more blue and red, like right here. And then we go to hue versus hue, where we can change, for example, the blue. So actually what we would want is change the blue and we can change the blue to green. And we should be able to change the red to something else as well. But, so this, this also works with just the composite. And that is because my lights had color in Blender, the blue and the red. But what if, for example, the subscribe text was red? Then we would now be changing the red to pink. And we don't want that, we just want to change the light. And that is why these, um, the light groups and rendering out the light groups can be very useful. In fact, we could even render out these three image sequences with just white lights, a white light on the left, a white light on the right, the white light in the middle, and then change the lights uh, to whatever we need in DaVinci Resolve. That's it for this video. In case you haven't seen it enough by now, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and get notified. You can support my channel at patreon.com slash chrisp, where you can find a whole bunch of blend files of previous finished tutorials and gold tier patrons get full access to my material packs, which are also sold separately on the Blender market. A big shout out to all patrons already supporting my channels. You guys are awesome. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Crispy out.